All right, I want to talk about one more matchup here on this prospects watch list day. Maybe I'll add another one after this, but for now we're going to hold it right here. The 330 game between Ole Miss and Alabama on CBS. That's going to be a must-watch game. You've got a very good quarterback in Matt Corral for, uh, for Ole Miss going out there. He's a junior. And he's arguably the best quarterback in this coming class. It was expected to be Spencer Rattler. Uh, Spencer Rattler has not lived up to that hype necessarily. Could it be Malik Willis? Could it be Matt Corral? It's really between those two for me at this point. You also have Jerry on Ely, the running back for Ole Miss. It'd be interesting to see what his role translates to in the NFL because he doesn't have that typical build per se. He's about 5'8", 190. So he's going to be more of a quote-unquote scat back at the next level. A guy's going to be more in that James White kind of role than a pure in-between the tackles runner. Big loss for Ole Miss. Uh, Jonathan Mingo, been one of the better receivers from this year. He's not going to play. Or un unlikely to play is how I saw online. Unlikely to play ends up coming game. He's got 290 receiving yards from this year. And three touchdowns. Speaking of wide receivers, uh, Dontario Drummond has been very big for them this year so far. He's a senior wide receiver, 339 receiving yards so far in just three games and four receiving touchdowns. So he's been Matt Corral's favorite target this year. Keep an eye on him in this matchup. And along the offensive line, senior right guard Ben Brown and junior left tackle Nick uh, Brocker, I believe is how I say his last name. Those are going to be two of the better offensive linemen in this game. More so left tackle than Ben Brown. I keep an eye on those guys. The left tackle class overall this year is going to be kind of weak. Uh, guys like Zion Nelson haven't necessarily stepped it up so far. And I'm kind of back and forth on some guys who are going to be between late first round picks to maybe mid second round picks. So this tackle class is going to be very interesting. There are a lot of names there. There are a lot of names in this class. Just not a lot of standouts. And three guys I want to talk about on the defensive side of the ball for Ole Miss. Starts and ends with edge rusher Sam Williams for them. He's their best pass rusher. He's the most productive guy on the line for them. The only player for them that has more than one sack so far this year. He's got four of them. Keep an eye on him. Uh, Lucky Henry, he's a senior at linebacker to watch. Also, some players in the defensive backfield, junior safety, A.J. Finley, and senior defensive back, Otis Reese. Otis Reese, I believe, is a transfer, but has not necessarily gotten a ton of playing time this year from what I can tell, or, is, has, or at least has not had a ton of productivity to this point in the season. But those are guys to keep an eye on for all Miss. Now, swapping over to Alabama, and I've done this Alabama rant two or three times now at this point in the season. So I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. This is going to be a bit of a quicker video than the past one. John Metchie, the third. A guy was used potentially as a first-round pick coming into the season. I've really dropped him down to a second-round county guy at this point. Has not been super productive, and just has not been as impressive as some of the guys like Traylon Burks at this point, or Drake London. So his stock is dropping, but he's still going to be one of the better receivers in this upcoming class. Senior running back Brian Robinson Jr. Alabama always produces these guys, even if they're mid-round picks, even if they go somewhere in the rounds three through five. They're still very productive when they see playing time at the NFL level. So I expect Brian Robinson to kind of fall into that trend. Junior tight end Jaleel Billingsley has gotten much more involved in the offense in recent weeks than he was, of course, in the first week. I don't think he caught a pass. Uh, but still, at this point, he has not seen a lot of playing time. And there's going to be scouts asking him about that quite a bit, I imagine. Right now, for him, the most important thing is just getting on the field, just putting up reps. And if he has the athletic traits and all the capabilities to be a star tight end, he could, he could still come out in the draft and still get taken fairly highly because of how the tight end class stacks up this year. It just comes down to, you know, making sure that you can prove that you have the capabilities to see the field. For whatever reason, Nick Saban's not playing him a ton. You have to kind of prove to scouts that you're able to overturn that, whether it's a mental thing, whether it's a maturity thing, you want to be able to obviously go around and kind of fix that before you enter the NFL. Junior left tackle Evan Neal. He's played all along the offensive line. He's the best tackle in this class right now. It's not really even close to me. He's going to be a top 10 pick as things trend for right now. Uh, junior right guard Emil Ekior Jr. Probably a mid-round selection. Not super high on him right now. Uh, less mobility along the offensive line than some of the other guys we've seen to this point. Along with senior right tackle Chris Owens, and our guy who does not have the production necessarily in the runner passing game right now as an offensive tackle. And a lot of other guys along the offensive line for Alabama, but he's played center before. He's got more positional versatility than maybe you're aware of. And the defensive line, a lot of mid round selections on this defensive front. I mean, tons of them. Uh, you start with senior defensive lineman LeBron Ray, a guy who could have come out this past year. Junior defensive lineman Brian Young, junior defensive lineman Dale, Ju Dale Jr. Oh, sorry, DJ Dale, excuse me, I don't know why I said Dale Jr. Uh, redshirt senior defensive lineman uh, Fidarian Mathis, who's actually trending, I think, in the upper direction right now. He might be probably the highest 
when thinking of this class, of this group of four guys I just talked about right now. But those four <laughs> built very good. I mean, these guys are going to be not going to be superstars at the NFL, but they're going to be those consistent stars. They're going to be real, those rotational defensive linemen that get on the field and make an impact in limited snaps or potentially win a starting job in a maybe a 3-4 scheme. They're that good. And Mathis in particular has been very good this year on his snaps so far and really starting to stand out for them. So Mathis is a guy I would keep an eye on. Probably be the highest one taking this group. LeBron Wright is someone everyone should know about at this point if you follow the SEC. And DJ Dale and Brian Young are increasing their stock each and every week. Now we got to go to the linebacker level. Christian Harris has a chance to be linebacker one in this class. I'm still worried about his ability to cover. Like I said, coverage for linebackers is really tough, especially when they go to the NFL level. A lot of them don't catch on right away. A lot of them take almost their entire rookie contracts to catch on. So I am worried about that for Christian Harris, even though, of course, he has the sideline and sideline range. He's got really good instincts against the run. Uh, flows downward very well, but just, again, a little bit worried about the coverage of Kip Billy. Same, same thing with Henry uh, Toa Toa or To'o To'o, I am worried about his holding up in coverage. Some people think he's turning upward. I think he was turning downward recently because he, he struggled so much in coverage. And again, it really comes down to the scheme that you play in the NFL level. There are certain schemes that will hide linebackers that are not great in coverage or will keep them from having too many coverage snaps. So it really comes down to where he plays at the NFL level. But for now, I am still worried about his ability to cover, even more so than Christian Harris. And then the defensive backfield, senior cornerback Josh Job, To me, not going to be competing for a first-round pick at this point. Uh, there are so many guys in the first round already. I think there's actually a better chance Roger McCreary for Auburn goes in the first round than Job at this point. But I think he'll be probably a second-round pick almost certainly. I don't think he'll fall to the third round. Uh, even with a very deep cornerback class coming out, I think he's still going to be a second-round guy. And then junior safety Jordan Battle. Another guy who I don't think will go in the first round just because you have Kyle Hamilton. Uh, Jaquan Brisker, I think Brandon Joseph has dropped down quite a bit for me. I don't have Brandon Joseph in the first round anymore. But the chances of three safeties or even four safeties going in the first round seems fairly low. So I think Jordan Battle is going to be a second round pick as well. But there you have it. Those are the top 2022 NFL draft prospects for the upcoming matchup between Ole Miss and Alabama. Again, that game's on 3.30 on CBC, uh, CBS. Excuse me. I always butcher the ends of these videos. But for now... I'm going to be signing off, guys. Going back to watch the end of the Arkansas uh, bludgeoning at the hands. Uh, who are they playing? What game was I watching? Georgia. There we go. Uh, but for now, thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe to my channel. I've got plenty of other prospects to watch videos out there for today. And I'll be doing more in the future. But for now, thank you. And I'll talk to you all later.